Hi everyone, welcome to your channel Impulse Tech. So today I come up with a new video series which is based upon getting started with Raspberry Pi Pico using the MicroPython. So here in this series you will learn about MicroPython as well as the Raspberry Pi Pico. So on my channel you will find all the projects made using the Arduino IDE. But for this series I am not going to use the Arduino IDE. So we are going to use the different IDE in order to use the MicroPython language on the Raspberry Pi Pico board. So this is going to be an exciting series in order to learn about the MicroPython. So I am trying to switch from C++ or the Arduino C to the MicroPython. So this is the different in this series. So first of all we will see how to configure the Thony IDE which is used for programming the Raspberry Pi Pico board using the MicroPython. So the second thing we will learn about how to turn on the onboard LED of the Pi Pico board and also we will connect the external LED and we will try to turn it on and off using the MicroPython. Third thing we wanted to give some digital inputs using the push button. So we are trying to read the digital data from the push button and also we will try to turn on and off the external LED using the push button. So these are the things that we are going to learn in the first video of this series. So without wasting time, let's get this started. Now here you can see I am having the Pi Pico board and the breadboard and also the micro USB cable. So you have to use this micro USB cable in order to connect the Pi Pico board to the laptop or computer. Now there is a technique in order to connect the Pi Pico board to the computer. So let's see what's that technique. So you just need to connect this micro USB to the Pico board and then while connecting the other end that is USB port to the laptop hold down this boot cell button and then connect it. So here you can see once you connect this board while holding the boot cell button then you will see this window will pop up. So if you go to this PC and you will see your Raspberry Pi Pico board appear as a mass storage device. So if you go inside this Raspberry Pi Pico board mass storage device then you will find there is a two files. So if you clicked on this file which is like info underscore uf2 then it will show you the version of bootloader and the board that you are using. So now there is one more file which is like so after clicking on that HTML document you will see you will redirect it to the Raspberry Pi Pico's official website. So here you will find all the technical details and all the documentation related to the board that you are using. So here if you go and if you click on the Raspberry Pi Pico board then you will find all the technical details that is pin diagram or something like that here you can see. So you will find all the necessary details regarding this Pi Pico board. So in this video we will mainly focused on how to get started with the MicroPython and the Thony IDE. Just type Thony download here you can see click on that board. So this is the IDE we will use in order to program our Pico board. So let's click on this first website which is like thony.org. Now here you can see like you can download the updated version like for Windows, Mac and Linux. So let's click on Windows here you can see. So I'll just click on this Windows like Thony 4.0.1. So now you can see I have started downloading it's just a 20 MB software that you need to install. So now I have already installed the Thony ID. So I am not going to install it once again. You just have to follow the normal uh, application installation process. It's very simple. So whenever I open this software you can see there is a window pop up coming which is called install MicroPython firmware for Raspberry Pi Pico. Now there are two ways in order to install the MicroPython firmware onto the Pi Pico board. So the first way is like here you can see this is like very simplest way to install the MicroPython firmware. So now here you can see the windows pop up coming up that installing the MicroPython firmware which is the easiest way in order to install this firmware. So what I'll do I'll just click on install. So now you can see I have successfully installed this MicroPython firmware. So this is the first way to install the MicroPython firmware onto the Raspberry Pi Pico board. Now the second way is that you have to download the UF2 file from the official website of the Raspberry Pi and then you have to paste that file into the Raspberry Pi Pico. So how will you do that? You just have to go to the uh, file manager of your windows and then just go to the mass storage device that is like Raspberry Pi and just paste that file which is like UF2 there and then 
you have successfully installed the micropython firmware onto the raspberry pi pico board so this is the second way to install the micropython firmware so once again i'll explain you how will you do that like the first way like you have to go to the tools you just have to go to the options and here you have to select the interpreter which is micropython raspberry pi pico here you can see there are like different boards available so here you have to select the micropython raspberry pi pico and then here you can see the install or update the firmware so you have to click on this in order to directly update the firmware or install the firmware this is very simplest way to install the micropython firmware so this is the basic user interface of the thony ide here you can see also you can change this user interface like the few basic things you can change like if you go to the tools and if you go to the options then you can change this look and feel of this entire id you just go to the theme and just select the theme that you want so here i'll select the dark and also you can select the ui theme so i'll select here clean dark so now you can see you can change the look and feel of the thony id so i'll just click on okay if you wanted to change like uh, the fonts and everything you can change that as well so i won't like touch to that so i'll just click on okay now you can see so this is the shell where you will see all the commands or all the data coming from the pi pico board so now it says device is busy so what i'll do i'll just click on stop now you can see the device is started so here we are using the micro pattern so we'll write the first line of code so what i'll do i'll just write here print and i'll just write here i'll just write here hello makers like this and i'll just click on this is the run so what i'll do i'll just i can check the real time feedback from the raspberry pi pico board so i'll just click on run and here you will see there are two options so where you wanted to save this file so what i'll do i'll just click on raspberry pi pico so i'll save this file on the raspberry pi pico now here comes the trick that you have to save all the files with extension called dot py so what i'll do i'll just write the i'll just give the name like demo uh any random name like demo underscore one two three and the extension we have to give like dot py and i'll just click on okay now you can see so your raspberry pi pico board responded here you can see it's successfully responded hello makers so now let's get started with blinking the onboard led so now we'll start so now let's see the coding which is like very important part of this project so i'll write from machine import pin here i'm not importing the entire machine module here i'm just importing the pins from the machine and here you have to use the capital p so also here i need to import the time as well so what i'll do i'll just import the time in order to turn on the led on and off so for that purpose i have to like import the time so now here i'm defining uh, the object which is like led is equal to pin opening closing bracket and i'll write here onboard led is connected to the pin number 25 so that's why i'll write here 25 comma and here i'll write capital p pin dot out so this is the output pin so that's why i have written pin dot out in the next line what i'll write i'll write the loop so here you can see while true so this t should be capital in the python you have to write this t capital and then enter and here you can see like it has automatically taken the indentation so in the python or the micro python you have to take like you have to use the indentation so if you if you haven't used the indentation then you you might find the error in your code so in the c++ what we used to do in order to turn on and off the led we'll write digital write the led and then we'll write high or low but here there are like few basic changes so what i'll do i'll write here led dot value and here you have to provide the value that which is for turning on you have to provide the value one and then click on enter and then just write here the delay time so uh, so in c++ we use or in arduino c what we used to write 
we used to write delay and then we used to provide the microseconds and all so here also we need to provide the delay by the different way so what i'll do i have imported the time module so that's why here i'll use time dot sleep and then i'll write here 0.5 or whatever the time you want so I have turned on LED for 0.5 seconds and then I'll just turn it off LED dot value for turning off I'll use the zero value and once again here I'll use time dot sleep with the delay time I'll write here. This is the basic structure of the micro python coding here you can see I have used. So now let's see whether this code will work or not. And there are few basic things I need to address you, like why I use time, like there are few uh, videos available on the internet, they are using you time, so why I have used the time here, so I will explain you each and every minute detail of the micro pattern coding. So I just click on run. Now you can see my code is successfully running. So now you can see in the video as well. So now you can see in the video as well, the LED it's turning on and off for like 0.5 seconds. Here you can see the LED is turning on and off. This is the onboard LED is turning on and off. So this is how like we need to write the program in the micro Python. So the next part of this project is we will connect the external LED and we'll, and we'll try to turn it on and off. So here I'm going to use the GPIO 15. So let's see how to connect the LED. You just have to connect the positive end of the LED to the 15 GPIO and the negative is the ground any ground pin of the PyPico board. So I'll just connect the ground pin to the ground and it's very simple. Now let's change the pin number and let's see that we are successfully able to turn on and off the external LED. So what I'll do, I'll just change its number to 15. It's very simple. So let's just click on the run button and let's just see now. So now you can see the external LED is also flashing after every half a second, you can see. So the external LED is flashing with every half second. This is very simple line of code that you need to write in MicroPython. So now we will use the push button in order to turn on and off the LED using the push button. So here we are going to read the digital input from the push button. So let's see how we are going to read the digital data from the push button. Now let's connect the push button and then I'll connect the diagonal end of the push button. And the another diagonal end of the push button is connected to the GPIO 14, GPIO 14 of the PyPico board. Okay, so how to read the data from the push button? Let's see how to do the coding for the same. Machine import. This P should be capital. If this P is not capital, then you will find the error in the code. So now I'll directly define the button or the object here you can see button is equal to pin opening closing bracket and here I'll write um, then I'll write the pin like a GPIO pin which I'm using here I'm using the 14 comma here I'll write pin dot in so here you can see in case of LED I have used pin number 15 as an out pin so that so we are using push button basically this is the input that we are giving to the uh, PyPico board so that's why I've used pin dot in and once again here you have to use the pull down register the internal pull down register of the PyPico board so if you don't know about the pull down and pull up registers do let me know inside the comment box so I will explain you about the what is pull down and what is pull up registers so here I'll write pull underscore so here we need to write pin dot and this pull underscore down. Now here you can see. The, so if you wanted to give the comment, so you can write hash. You can start so here on that hash reading the button state. So I'll write here print. So inside the print, I, what I'll do, I'll write button dot value opening closing bracket. So this is what I'll do in order to read the data of the push button. So 
so i'll just click on run and here you need to save this file so i'll save this file as a raspberry pi pico and i'll write here the name test123 dot py as i mentioned you earlier let's click on okay so here you can see the value of the push button so this is how we can able to read the data given by the push button so this is the digital data that is given by the push button so now we are going to turn on and off the LED, external led using the push button so let's make the new file once again and here let's do the programming same way that we have done like uh, here i'll write from machine import so what i'll do i'll just import the time here i'm using the led to the gpio pin 15 so what i'll do i'll write here led is equal to pin opening closing bracket and inside it i'll write the pin number which is like gpio 15 comma pin dot out so the, basically this is the led pin so that's why it's output pin and the another pin which is which i'll write here which is for push button so i'll write here button is equal to pin 14 comma here we need to write pin uh, dot so pin dot in we need to write pin dot pull underscore down and close the bracket and now here we need to write the loop which is like while true now here you need to use the conditional statement so here i'll write if button dot value is equal to is equal to one if button value is equal to one then we need to turn on the led okay so we'll turn on the led so here i'll write for turning on the led i'll write led dot value as i've explained you at the start of the project like in order to turn on the led what we need to write led dot value we need to provide the value which is like for turning on like one you need to give the delay so i'll write time dot sleep with the delay of uh, one second or like 0 0.5 second and the next line i'll write the another if block for turning off so here i'll write button dot value is equal to is equal to zero and here i'll provide the value which is zero in order to turn off the led and also i'll provide the delay time which is like time dot sleep now we'll see the file is running and let's test the output of the project so now you can see on the screen the led is turning on and off the based on the push button inputs so this is how simply we can write the micro python code inside the thony and we can control the different gpio pins of the raspberry pi pico board so i hope you found this video helpful in order to getting started with micro python using the raspberry pi pico board and the thony id so see you in the next video of the micro python series thanks for watching